you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. You're watching The Morning Swim Show on Friday, October 23rd, 2014. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. Today in the Finis Monitor, we will talk to Michigan swimming head coach Mike Bottom. He's got a big meet at his pool in Ann Arbor today as the Wolverines face off against Texas, Indiana, and Louisville. So without any further ado, let's bring in Mike Bottom via Skype. Mike, it's good to see you. How are you today? It's good to be with you again, Jeff. Well, this is a big meet today, the fifth year, actually, that you've had uh, a meet against Texas and Indiana, and now you're adding Louisville to the mix. Uh, why, why add another team in? What, what we're about, and I, I'm sure I speak for Eddie and for Arthur and for Ray, is that we want to see swimming be, and diving uh, be exposed, to have, uh, have people get a chance to see great swimming and diving all year round every year not just every four years and bringing this group together is is pretty incredible uh, both on the swimming and the diving side so what does it mean for michigan swimming to in the broad scope of the season to have this meet happen at the end of october well being the number one uh ann arbor being the number one swimming uh city in the world we'll say in the u.s but uh as thank you very much for that uh, it brings in a lot of our local fans. It brings in people from all over the area, even out of state. Uh, we're going to have some teams come in uh, to celebrate swimming. We usually do around now, we do a swimming carnival. Uh, and we, we celebrate swimming and diving and water polo. Uh, and, and this is what this is. It's a celebration of swimming. It's some great swimming. We're going to get to sw see some of our postgraduates uh, swim. Uh, and, and, you, you know, you get some races that... Uh, maybe somebody wasn't happy with their NC2A uh, finish last year. They get another shot at them. So Connor Yeager gets a shot at, uh, you know, Michael McBroom. And uh, Michael Winalda gets a, a shot at uh, uh, DeLuca. And we'll see, some, we'll see some great battles all around. Yeah, those are going to be, I think those are going to be just as exciting and, as the regular college meet. Because usually when you have postgrads that are swimming at the same time as a college meet, it's usually just one or two um, swimmers just doing just some exhibition races, but these seem like it's going to be really exciting. I mean, you mentioned Connor and Michael McBroom and Jao DeLuca and Michael Winaldo. I mean, you also, I mean, you got Michael Klee who's going to be in the mix, and, and he's going to probably make it exciting too. And then you got um, Cody Miller who's going to be there for Indiana. I mean, it's just hey. every team's going to bring something special. I think this, I think this post-grab meet's going to be just as exciting. It's going to be all around exciting. And, you know, you, you can't, some of the great, you know, you got Texas coming in, and Texas, one, they're the best team in the country. There's no doubt having the number one recruiting class and only losing one swimmer that scored last year. Uh, they are the, the top team coming in this year, uh, and we get to see a little bit of their swimmers and how they're going to compete. I don't, I don't think Joseph Schooling's got a chance to compete for Texas yet. Uh, he's going to have make his debut here. Uh, of course, you know, they're, they're just loaded everywhere. Well, talk about the training leading up to this. What training phase is Michigan in at this point of the season? Well, I think everybody's in a, in a training phase right now. Everybody's uh, getting their butts beat. Uh, and that's important that we're training for the end of the season. And I think that every one of the coaches here would agree that, you know, we're putting in the work to, to last us for a whole season. However, uh, with swimming, like track and field, we're beginning to understand that we can race at any point in the season with just a little bit of rest, a couple of days of, of recovery. Uh, any team anywhere can swim fast. That's very, and that's very interesting to hear because a lot of swimmers during the college season, especially this time of year, are swimming tired because, as you said, they're getting their butts kicked. So, you know, when you're, when you're watching your, your swimmers at this meet, are you going to be 
less concerned about the times on the school board and more concerned about just how they're racing in the pool? Or is it times on the school board going to be very important as well? Well, you know, we're fortunate to have time on the scoreboard um, because even though you have great swimmers in the water, you're also racing the rest of the country. And the, and the times, I mean, you look at the SMU Classic and the women's side, ooh, there were some fast times there. I don't, I don't know if you got a chance to look at some of those times, but people are swimming fast all the time. And, uh, and the clock is a great, uh, it broadcasts how well we're swimming today uh, here as well as what happened well as what's happening over in California or Arizona. Uh, I mean, there's fast times all over the country right now. We featured one of your workouts in a recent issue of Swimming World magazine and involved the use of colors to denote the swimming intensity for a particular set. Talk about why that training style appeals to you. Well, John Urbanichek being such a great uh, coach and mentor, uh, brought in the color system. I think he brought him in. He brought it into the USA Swimming uh, Arena, uh, and so that's kind of, it's widespread, and, and people really understand certain colors at certain or certain paces and certain speeds and certain heart rates. What we've done is expanded that a little bit. We've added colors. Uh, we have a, our own system of colors, yet we still maintain some of the colors that everybody understands. The red being the, the tough color that t it continues on and on and on and on to push your threshold forward. The blue is, is a little bit higher than that. But we've added purple, we've added uh, yellow down in the, the lower end of the aerobics back, orange and white. Uh, so we've, we've got our own little system of communication between the coaches and what they're trying to accomplish and the swimmers who are trying to get the most out of the workout. So it makes it, that does seem like the, the best way to explain why this system works because it makes it easier to communicate between the coaches and swimmers as a coach can say okay go this at 80 percent you know a swimmer may not really understand it as well as you just say we're going to do a set of hundreds at yellow they probably understand that a lot faster and, and what it also allows us to do is is understand what that workout did uh, and and then in the future we can change that workout we're always about getting better here at michigan that's something we just pound the table about and you can't get better unless you know where you where you've come from. So obviously, like you said, John Urbanchek was the one that brought this in. When was the first time that you started using that type of workout? <laughs> when I walked through the doors down there, <laughs> uh, you know, we when we first got here, uh, Dr. Josh White, myself, uh, you know, I said to Josh, I go, look, this is this is a we need to understand what goes on here. We need to understand what what the great traditions at Michigan have been so that we can make them better, right? So the first year uh, with John on deck, we basically picked his brain, tried to understand the way he'd set up things in the past. Bob Bowman, having been here, uh, you know, John has, was with Bob the whole way through. So we kind of got, we got a, a, to pick both Bob's and John's brain at the same time. Uh, and, and we were able to put together a system that we felt we could move forward with. Was that easy to make that adjustment after not using that system before? Well, you know that I was a sprint coach before I came here. Yes. <laughs> and there was a lot of people that said that, hey, he's going to come in and he's going to ruin the Michigan culture and the Michigan tradition of great distance swimmers. You think that, uh, what do you think? Last year, I think we got four of the top eight in the, uh, in the mile. I believe that was four of the top eight. Yeah, uh, I think you've done pretty well with your distance program so there. <laughs> so I think we're maintaining that, that distance culture and, and trying to add a speed component to the whole system. Yeah, and you've got some great uh, swimmers there doing, you know, have some real talent in the sprinting, particularly Paul Powers just there starting out his freshman year. We talked to him on the morning swim show. He said he's really glad, he, you know, he made that decision early, very early to go to Michigan, and he's glad he's following through. And You've even got uh, George Bovell there, one of your postgrads, who's you know now focusing on the 50. So, I think that it's really interesting how you've been able to keep that mentality of being a great sprint coach in your past before Michigan, and still be able to um, have a great distance tradition. Is that very hard for you to to maintain at Michigan? When you have great coaches, you know, like Dr. Josh White, Mark Hill, Daniel Tanzel, Rick Bishop. Sam Winsman, all of these coaches are coming in with a great understanding of what, what uh, their, their programs and their systems were, and then we try to integrate them into one uh, and all grow 
to get better. Um, and, you know, and, and again, a lot of our the way we get better is bringing in teams like we are doing this weekend. Uh, you know, today, today, you know, you're going to see some of the fastest sprinters in the country come at us. Uh, you know, John Mur Murray was an 18-3 split last year at the NC2As from Texas, uh, and and then he's he's not the best sprinter at this time. So, uh, and you know, then you have Louisville's got some great sprinters, and Indiana's got a history of great sprinters, and. So we're we're gonna we're gonna see some fast swimming. Yeah, it's gonna be one one of those meets that everybody's gonna be talking about for many many weeks. Uh, you you've got a great group, like you mentioned, all those coaches who are really there to help support you and to support the swimmers. You got the women's team you got to take care of. You got the men's team you got to take care of. You got a big post grad group you got to take care of. How are you able to balance your attention to make sure everybody's getting the work done that they need to do? That's a great. That's a great question, and I think that uh, a lot of a lot of what has to be done is people need to be able to to exert their expertise. And like I said, uh, Dr. Josh White is is one of the premier distance coaches in the country right now. Uh, he's got some open water people that are that consistently are in the top five or six. Uh, you know, and then Rick Bishop comes in uh, from USA Swimming. Uh, with some incredible expertise, and, and my job is to just to kind of move them all together. We have a, we have a, uh, a united culture of, of understanding that we're going to get better every day, that we're going to work hard, uh, and that that what we're trying to accomplish is is just a, this. What right now is just a portion of what we're trying to accomplish because you know let's just face it, swimming is a very short-lived sport that gives us a great opportunity, probably the best opportunity of all to learn how to get better and, and learn how to, to make yourself better through creativity, through hard work, all the lessons that parents want their kids to learn, that I want my kids to learn, can be learned in the water. And, and that's why swimming is such a great sport. And that's why we're doing this, because we want everybody to see, you know, Texas has got great swimmers. Louisville's got great. Indiana's got. We got great swimmers, and all of these great swimmers are great people. And you can bet that that they're all going to go out and make a difference in the world. Yeah, definitely true. Definitely true. Um, there at the Canem Natatorium, do you still have that clock that ticks down to the days before the Olympics? Yep, yeah, right there, right, right underneath the Olympic rings. It's counting down. I don't know if as a swimmer I could handle seeing that clock every day, but as a coach, does it serve as a, a motivator for you? It, it always reminds us. Every time we walk into the natatorium, the, the, the swimmers always walk by all the caps of people who have swum here at Michigan that have been at the Olympics and, and gotten medals for the U.S. or different other different countries, as well as when they walk in, uh, right above the, the hallway is the Olympic rings. It says it's not every four years it's every day so there's always that constant reminder of the olympics which you know like you said you're, you're dealing with the college season now but it's always in the back of their minds that 2016 gets closer and closer with each second and for you probably even i mean you've got to start planning i mean all that stuff you know 2016 comes pretty quick from now and the nice thing is we have post grads here that that's their focus. That's what why they're swimming. They're swimming to make the Olympic teams, and uh, and having them there again is a great reminder to to our student athletes that are that are training here, both men and women, that that's what this program is about. Yes, we want to win championships, but we want to reach that highest level of swimming and diving, and that's to make the Olympic teams. Definitely so. Well, I know there's a lot of uh, things you still get ready for this meet, uh, but before we let you go, Coach, we want to submit you to the final five. These are five questions we ask all of our guests on the morning swim show to close it out for you. So first question is, <clears throat> if you could trade lives with any swimming celebrity for one day, who would it be? Wow. <laughs> you should have given me a prep on that one. <laughs> I um, don't like to do that. <laughs> You know, I I would like to, I would like to be on deck with Bob Bowman. I would like to to be there and and kind of watch and see what Michael's doing and and get a chance to work with Allison Schmidt and get you know get a chance to look at that crew. I think that it's a great crew there, uh, you know, and and 
it's it's just, it would be a fun a fun experience. You're right. You're definitely right. Who's a non-swimming celebrity you would like to trade lives with for a day? Oh, you you're killing me here. <laughs> um, you know, I I don't think that way, right? I, <laughs> I have three young daughters who I love being with every day. I don't want to trade my life, right? I enjoy my life, and uh, so I, you got me thinking completely outside my box. Eh? Well, I'm, I'm sure your daughters will love hearing that. <laughs> um, next question. Besides this current year, what's a year of your life that you would like to relive? Uh, I think that I would probably relive my senior year of college one more round. Uh, you know, that was a year that uh, we had won three national championships, and uh, my senior year, we got fourth. Uh, I think that if I could live that year again, we might have a little more focus. We might keep ourselves a little healthier. We might do some things different that, that maybe would have given uh, that USC team in, in, uh, in memory of Coach Peter Dalen another, another national championship. Yeah, well, very, very interesting. Uh, what's your favorite movie? Chariots of Fire. I got love. I love Chariots of Fire. I, I love the the whole message of Chariots of Fire that that we are given great gifts and uh, and when we exercise our gifts, we we experience God's pleasure. Very interesting. And the last question for you: What's your favorite season? You know, I gotta say, I, I love winter season. I love the snow. I remember walking when I first my, one of my first winters here, walking from here over to the administrative building along the track and, and having the snow fall and my feet just walking down the track, the, the crunch of the snow and just complete quiet. Uh, and it's just a very peaceful, peaceful thing. Yeah, that's a polar opposite from the time you spent with the race club in, in the Florida Keys, I gotta tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell you, I remember swatting more mosquitoes and no seams than I do the warm weather there. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a trade off. <laughs> yeah. Well, Coach, thank you so much for joining us today, and good luck with the meet. I'm sure it's going to be, like we said, fantastic with the, the college swimmers and the postgrads, and looking forward to see how it affects the rest of the season. Thank you, Jeff, and thanks for your time. And we, we just hope that, uh, again, that people will really understand what a great thing college swimming is and college swimming and diving and all college sports and, and get out and support, whether it be our quad meet or local meets. Uh, get out and support your local college team, whether it be writing emails to the athletic directors about how important that is for the future of your children and, uh, and, and for the future of our sport. Very true, very true. Good, wise words, Coach. Thank you again. Thanks, Jeff. All right, and that's going to do it for this edition of the Morning Swim Show. Swimming World will bring you coverage of this quad meet taking place today at the University of Michigan. As we said, it's bound to be one of the top meets of the weekend, so be sure to head to SwimmingWorld.com for the recap. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.